Today, I'm gonna show you how I went from painting cars like this to this, without having to paint all of these paintings in between. Some of my favorite subjects to paint are street scenes and neighborhood scenes. All of these scenes have something in common. They all have cars in them. And I have to say that when I first started painting and drawing and getting into this type of subject matter, my cars were not good. It's pretty rough. If you don't paint cars properly, your scene can feel amateurish, disjointed, off balance and out of scale. Cars are a thing that are so familiar to us that if they don't look right, it's gonna throw off your whole painting. The number one thing that we need to think about is perspective. When you're painting cars, they need to align with the perspective of the scene that you're painting. They need to be in scale with other objects in your scene. If a car is too small or too big, it will immediately pull the viewer out of the scene. Just like when we're painting figures in a scene, you can keep their heads at the same level and you extend the length of their body as they get closer to the viewer. You can do the same thing with cars. Typically, if it's two cars, the roof of the car is gonna be the same height. So as the car gets closer to you, you can make the bottom of the car larger, but keep the roof of the car on the same level. So that's key to keeping your car in perspective and scale with other things that are around it. There are certain elements of the car that have to be painted correctly in order for them to seem believable. Can you guess what these things are? It's easy to get obsessed with the detail of the grill of the car, how the wheels look, things like that. That's not key in making this car believable. The key is in the windshield. The windshield has to look right or the back window of the car has to look right if it's driving away from the viewer. And as the angle of the car changes, these lines on the edges of the windshield need to change accordingly. The windshield has an angle on that side and then the other side is less of an angle because now the car is turned. The key to painting a windshield is we don't want it to be too tall or too short. Find that middle ground and have it be in proportion to the rest of the vehicle. And the shadow of the car is very important. The bottom of a car is really close to the surface of the ground. So the shadow under the car needs to be dark. That helps connect your car to the ground. And we must have the bottom of the car be flat. If this line is angled in any way, it makes the car feel unstable. And this one is slightly tilted sideways. A big rule is you've gotta keep that flat. No matter the angle of the car, keep these lines flat, that's so important. Key number two to painting cars is simplifying. Start to think of cars as shapes rather than a complicated subject with a lot of detail. If we can think of the car as a shape, and really simplify it, we can actually become more accurate. So try not to get lost in too many details in the windows. None of that is important. So simplify as much as you can. Let's move on to point number three, and this is one of my favorite things in painting cars that will help elevate your cars to an even higher level. And that is reflections. Cars have reflective surfaces. Surfaces that are upward facing, that are sky facing, will have a bit of blue in their reflections. Side and down facing surfaces, like the side of the car, they can reflect some of the other colors around them. So here you have some warmer colors on the side of the car, reflecting some of the warmth that's over here in the scene. When I paint cars, I try to incorporate the car into each stage of my painting. In the first wash of my painting, that's when I'm laying in the lightest values of the car. What are the reflections looking like? What are the lightest colors of the car? If it's a red car, typically I'm laying in a light red color now. When we get into the middle values in the darks, we can do a darker version of that color. And once you do this, you can really give your car form. The first wash gives you light, the second wash gives the car form, and the last bit of darks give your cars the details that they need to finish them off. So if you can keep these things in mind, you will see a lot more success when you're painting cars. And if your cars are believable, your street scenes are more believable, you're adding more of a sense of life and movement to your paintings, and you can really take those street scenes, those neighborhood scenes to the next level. So much of our success in painting is due to having a plan before we get started. And that's exactly why I made this free video lesson, Seven Secrets of Fresh and Powerful Painting. In this video lesson, I talk about important concepts in planning your painting, simplifying your brushwork, 
and most importantly, knowing when to put your brush down before you overwork your painting. Now on top of this, it comes with a reminder checklist that you can use before every painting to make sure that you're thinking through these things each time that you paint. And it also comes with my watercolor supplies guide. Take advantage of these free resources to keep growing and improving and learning and moving forward.